All right, today we're going to try to evict this Italian Sisa. He's been living rent-free in my naughty bucket for about a year. I think that's when these were introduced, and I tried it. I can't tell you how many attempts, failed attempts, I had on this guy when I finally threw in the towel, dropped him in the naughty bucket, and kind of forgot about him. Yesterday I spent some time with him trying to figure it out again. I like to pull him out once in a while. And let me show you what the problem is with this Sisa. First of all, let me show you the key. It is a, you can see it is a dimple lock. And on this particular one, we have a super high cut right there in the very back, and then a very low cut, and then another very high cut, and then a couple of real low cuts. So these are like maximum cuts on this guy. Not unusual for CISA lock, so don't, you know, it's not unique to this one. So that wouldn't explain it. It would make it, it maybe believe it's, you know, physically impossible given the pick technology that we have, but let me show you the thought process and my failures. Uh, okay, so first of all, tension it. Uh, traditional tensioner, the thinnest one, we can either put him in like that or we can put him in like that. And that's how I chose to do it. But let me take him out for now. Let's pretend he's in there and I'm going to show you what I got stuck in. Now, first of all, take a look at that bidding. The, the, uh, let me grind a probe here. All the pins are deep up inside of there. And you got this nasty warding and then you got a real short little chamber here on the left side. Now that's usually where you index your pick. So again, I've got a, um, a right turn here, put him in right there. And I hope this shows up on the camera. When he's indexed on the bottom left, you'll notice when I try to rotate, he hits that dang warding right there every time. So I real quick knew that these weren't going to work. So I grabbed one of my old sour picks and I filed him viciously and put him in there. And he again, he doesn't quite clear that. And I realized that if I kept filing the tip off that, I was going to ruin it forever. So I got another pick that was easier to replace, and that would be a half diamond. So I took that half diamond. I kind of ground off the front of it. So it's still the height of a half diamond, and he does fit now. So I got him in there. I got him indexed. But when I rotated him, I real quick realized, if you take a look, it doesn't quite get all the way, oops, doesn't quite get all the way to the top. It leaves a pretty significant gap there. So if there are any high cuts, like the maximum cuts, this pick wasn't going to do it. And it didn't. I messed with this for probably an hour and a half yesterday. I got plenty of fault sets out of this guy, but no joy out of this. Laying in bed this morning, I got to thinking, maybe I should try to attack it from the other side. So again, same tension wrench on that side. Um, and let me grab that pick. And then I was able to get him in. If I slide him right there and just put him in the bottom of that groove, he did. He does clear and he gets up almost to the very highest part. The problem here is when I started getting further and further into the back, that sh shaft of that worked its way out of that groove as I started putting a little tension on those picks, trying to reach those high cut ones. And he actually got in there and kind of got stuck. So I think he was probably in the back of the lock oriented, something like that. So when I would press on the pick, it was giving me what I thought was counter rotation. In fact, I was just twisting the core with this. So I needed to figure out a way to make this happen. And here's what I've come up with. First of all, I took the number 10 pick and I took a pair of pliers and put a little bit more curve on it. And I shortened it just a little bit with a file and some sandpaper. So now he does fit in that groove and he will rotate up to the maximum height. Again, I was getting stuck time after time. So I changed the way I indexed it. So I took this bit, this tensioner and I shoved him right there in the top. And by putting him there like that, he actually prevents that pick from rotating up out of that little groove. It's kind of like a little guide. The problem with doing this is I kept getting stuck uh, inside of there. So what I'm going to have to try to do is take the pick, put him in the groove, shove him all the way to the back, put the tensioner in to act as the guide, and then pick my way back out and hope I can get the majority of the picks that'll at least give me some freedom of movement with this guy. That's the theory. Let me clamp it up and see how well the theory is going to work. You know, you guys hear me say it all the time. If what you're doing doesn't work, try something different. And that's what we're going to do this morning. All right, there's no tailpiece to interfere on the vise, so we're not going to have any problem here. Same key, same lock. All right, let's try this. I'm going to take this guy and fill up that entire gap. In fact, I'm going to pick him that way so it kind of levers down into that little groove. 
So let's stay with that. Let's first get our pick started before we start levering stuff. Get in there. Get in there. All right, now we're going to lever him and hold him in place. He seems to be still moving freely. So, so far, so good. I got a fault set, and that's the deepest one I've had. So we're on the right track. There is counter rotation on pin four. Good. I'll take it. There was some more counter rotation up in the front. Pin two, I think. Let's check these guys in the back. So I have a fault set, so I know we're hung up on some kind of security pin, probably a spool. Okay, there's another one. That's pin three. Counter rotation, I'm working my way under him. Something in the back fell. Check. Okay, now we got the fault set back. Let's get on. Okay, now three is done. He's not giving that counter rotation anymore. Yes, he is. Let's make sure that's not warding. Yeah, that's three. All right, I'll take it. Check the back. It feels like three again. He must have fallen down. I'm going to push him a little harder this time. That's the same thing that happened last time. I'll take it. I think that got three. I think I'm hung up on one now. Come on, counter rotation. Yep. Just want to make sure I'm not getting on the warding, trying to pick warding. And I think that's it. Come out. I'll take it. That was definitely a spool. We have a very deep fault set. Three is decked down. Oh man. Same thing. Let's check one again. And there it is. All right, I'll take it. All right, so like I said, if what you're doing doesn't work, try something different. <laughs> I can't tell you how many different techniques I tried on this guy. I am glad to get him evicted from the naughty bucket. So let's gut him and see what's in there. It's probably just spools. That's my feeling. And I think because of the combination of spools and a really evil keyway, I just couldn't find the right tool. All right. Um, whoops. Let's try this guy. Mm, that's not going to work. How about that little guy right there? And of course, he's too small. That's too big. All right. Um, old school. Old school. I need a, another wedging device. Put him right there. Put him right there and pop that off. And no stinking tools. I do need this guy though. All right, so let's put him right there. Uh, he is picked. Let's go ahead and uh, lock him back up all the way around, Bill. Put the key in so I know exactly where those pins are going to be, like that. And of course, that's where the groove lines up. Of course. Let's try it like that. I think we've only got spools. We're getting ready to find out. Another disastrous cutting on the way. And that is the wrong size. All right. Try this guy. He's a little bit smaller. Yep. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> yep, you turned it the wrong way, Bill. Well, there, <laughs> there are the pins that control. <laughs> the, those are for key control. That's it. The other ones went right there, and they just dumped right here. Sorry about that. Crap. I saw those guys, and I thought I had it. But wrong answer, Bill. All right, nothing special about this core other than my lack of orientation. Uh, no serrations, nothing inside of there. You do have some control pins. That's all those are. I don't know if they come out or not. Yeah, there they are. Those are just for the control. They fit on the 
on these guys on the opposite side. And that way he makes it much more difficult to bump using a, a key that doesn't have these. Also, certain locksmiths have certain combinations of the six pins that are here on the bottom so that only they are authorized to cut that particular key. That's the only reason you have those. I did not have to pick them. I did have to pick these guys. And let's see what we got. It doesn't matter, I guess. And there should be one more. There he is. So the steel one is probably the first one, to be my guess. And right away I can see, let me grab the tweezers. These are these are all standard, standard, standard. On, the, on this one and a couple of the others, we have that reduced diameter. That's why I touched pin number one and it released so quickly. It was kind of a surprise, almost like serration, but that's because we had that reduced diameter on the top of three of these. There's another one. This is just a standard pin. Now let's try not to screw this up, Bill. My God. All right, so we have a steel spool. Another spool, but this time brass. So we got a little anti-drill built into this guy. Another very long spool. Another super long spool, my goodness. Another spool, all spools, guys. Let's check that last one, get them from the rear. And we got a standard. And that makes sense. With all those spools, you gotta have one standard. I'm not gonna dump the springs, they're all there. All right, guys, here's what we're looking at. I'm sorry about dumping out those key pins, but at least they're all there. I can't swear to the sequence, but really doesn't matter. You got three of them with that reduced diameter on the top. In this case, and I don't know if they were in that position, three, four, and six. And then spools everywhere except for chamber six. And the top, are they are in the correct order. All right, guys, appreciate your time. Stay safe, stay legal, and thanks for your patience. <laughs> thanks, guys.